Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting to highlight any change from the previous record. For example, here we can see all of our customers are in groups, one, two, three, four, and so on. If you sort them and you want to see when the group changes, for example, these are all group one, there's one from group two, group three, and then group four is another change. And we'll do that without any programming. All right, some prerequisites. First, of course, you're going to have to know how to use conditional formatting. Go watch this. You'll need to know how to make calculated fields and queries. You'll need to know how to use the DLOOKUP function, very important. And finally, the DMAX function, which is DLOOKUP's cousin. So if you don't know how to use any of those things, go watch them on my website, on my YouTube channel. They're all free. And then come on back. All right, this question came in this morning from Eric in my access form on my website. He basically says he's got a field called sales order, which is a number assigned to orders, I'm assuming. And he says he might have sales order one appear several times on the list, but interspersed might be sales order two and five. Is there a way to highlight the differences? And now, of course, I do my best to interpret when people post questions because I have to try to understand what you're talking about. So what I'm took this to mean is you want to basically say, okay, let's group these all together and see where it changes from one group to another. Okay. And I've seen this question many times in many different forms. So let me show you how to do this. All right, here's my tech help template. I flipped it around instead of using sales orders, I'm going to use customers and put them into groups, same situation. All right. So in my customer table, I simply added a group number field and I arbitrarily assigned group numbers to each of these people. Okay. Now you'll have to sort them somehow. All right, so I sorted them by group number and then by customer ID. Now keep in mind the customer ID might not necessarily be the order in which the records were added. So you could also use a date field for that if that's more important, if you want them in the order in which they were actually added to the table. But I use customer ID because it's a number I've got handy. This is simply bring in customer T dot star, bring in group number, bring in customer ID or whatever other field you want to have the secondary sort based on. Okay. Also in this query is where you'll put any criteria, such as if you only want this between two dates, if you want to say between, you know, the order date has to be between two values, you could put that in here as well. If you don't know how to use access query criteria, go watch this video. You'll find links to all this stuff down below, by the way. All right. So once this is ready, you've got them sorted by group. So all the group numbers are next to each other. That's important. All right. The secondary sort is then customer ID. Now we save that that's customer group Q. Then we'll use that to build customer group two Q. Okay. Customer group two Q is going to check to see what the previous group number item was. Okay. So in other words, we've got them sorted by group number and customer ID. Okay. So group number one for customer one, look to see what the previous record was. There is no previous record. So it's going to return a zero. In fact, let me move this over here. Okay, so the next record, we're in group one. Let me, let me do this real quick too there. Group number one, customer. Okay, so group number, uh, group number one still, customer two, what's your previous customer ID? So look to the previous record, find the customer ID, and then bring back what group that person was in, group one. Okay, next record, customer three, What's the previous customer ID? And to find that, we're going to say, what is the largest customer ID less than me? Okay, so if I come down here and I am on this record, okay, for the customer ID field, I'm going to say, what is the largest customer ID less than me? That's a nine. And then I say, what group was customer nine in? That's a three. So we use a D max and then a D lookup. And here's what it looks like. I'll zoom in so you can see them. All right, it's just all the fields from customer group Q. Then to find the previous customer ID, we say, I should have told you to, look, to watch the NZ video as well. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, so we're going to say DMAX, the customer ID from that customer group Q, where the customer ID is less than my value. And NZ just says, if that's null, give it a zero. Okay, so that'll bring back the previous customer ID or whatever field you're sorting on. So if you're sorting on date, this will be your date field, previous customer ID based on the date, not the ID. Okay, once you have that value, 
then you can look up that guy's group number. Previous group number is the lookup group number from customer T where the customer ID equals that previous customer's ID. Get it? Okay. So if you pick any record like this one, notice these are sorted by group number, then customer ID or whatever your sort field is. So if you pick any record like this one, all right, that's customer ID seven. What is the largest customer ID that is smaller than seven? Well, that's six. Then what is six's group number? Okay, see that? And it looks up and it should return a three and put that right there. Now, once you have this query all set, we're gonna take this customer group two query and make this the data source for my customer list form. All right, design view, properties here, right? Change the record source to customer group two queue. Now I can bring in the previous group and the group number, okay? This is the previous group, this is the group number, and now it's simply a matter of using conditional formatting to compare this to this. And we don't even have to use an expression, we can just use basic conditional formatting. All right, click on that, go to format, conditional formatting, and it's going to be field value is not equal to previous group number in brackets, of course. Conditional formatting is one of those places where you gotta use brackets for a field even if you don't have spaces in your field name. And then set whatever format you want down here. All right. And as long as those two things are different, you'll see this changes every time you have a new one. So you can see this is all the group threes, all the group fours, all the group fives. Okay. Now, of course, within minutes of answering Eric, he came back with some other stuff. He's like, wouldn't it be cool if, right? People always want to add more. <laughs> That's okay. He wants basically every group to have its own unique color. Okay, and you could certainly do that. And I gave instructions on here. You could use a record set to loop through those values and assign them, say, one to 10, and then set up a conditional formatting for numbers one through 10, right? Where one is green, two is blue, three is red, and so on. And no matter what the group numbers are, as long as you don't have more than 10 of them, then that'll work just fine. I cover record sets in this video, which I also cover in detail in Access Developer 16. If you really wanna learn record sets, Access Developer 16 is where it's at. Because using a record set, you could essentially generate this list and then assign them, you know, look at the group number and then once it changes, increment your X value inside your record set loop. All right, that's a little more advanced. And in Access Developer 40, I actually teach you how to use conditional formatting in VBA. So we set all these different color schemes up in VBA. And there's actually a, there's a, a, a tech help video on event countdown. I'll put a link to this down below as well. This gives you some of it, but in uh, developer 40, I go into a lot more detail. Okay. So there you go, Eric. I hope that uh, at least gets you started, get you pointed in the right direction. And uh, as I mentioned uh, in the forum, I'm in the middle of moving right now, so I don't have a lot of time. But I just, uh, I had enough time this morning to, to sneak this video out to you while I'm uh, drinking my coffee. Because, you know, I'm an old man. I just turned 50. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to be moving boxes, uh, Daddy's got to have his coffee in the morning and stretch his back out a little bit. So uh, for the rest of the day, it's going to be loading up the van. So, uh, but that's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you guys want to see more with this, uh, post a comment down below. If you want to see me, you know, tweak this, change it, make some modifications, whatever. As soon as I have time, I'll try to fit it in. Okay, bye-bye.